Welcome to this week's edition of The Mediator with me, your host, Brian West, here to give you the top eight headlines and developing news stories that made in this week. Now, as usual, I'll give you the top eight local headlines and developing news stories that made in first, followed by a movie clip, a skit, a trailer, or some pictures, or maybe something that's going on in the community. And then I'll give you the top eight international headlines and developing news stories that made in this week. So let's waste no time, folks. Let's get to it. Story number one, assessing local cemeteries. Death is certain, but one local article drawing attention to local cemeteries points out something very critical to human existence, and that is respect for the dead. Just about every civilization some shows some form of respect for the dead, but after Memorial Day, no matter what religion anyone claims or, ser or claims to be or claims to serve, it could be time to check in and see how the the cemetery business is doing especially after what just brought what was just brought on by COVID-19 a lot of people died a lot of people got sick uh, this could be why the state is drawing attention to the cemetery business and trying to make sure that they are meeting uh, state standards story number two Hubbard showing veterans appreciation uh, Hubbard like many other surrounding communities poured out support for veterans this Memorial Day. That's good. Uh, local districts have done everything they can to pour out, well, they possibly can to pour out uh, their much appreciation for the men and women who has who have served uh, in the, this country, America's and America's armed forces. Now, there's been T-shirts, calendars, bridge dedications, and even outreach events all geared into showing appreciation and love this Memorial Day. Now, this story shows the continued fact that serving for the greater good of the country is priceless. Story number three, prison jobs and the headlines. This is a big headline especially for the local prison system. The only news that's been circulating about the local prisons outside of recent activities concerning COVID-19 cases is a new deal reached by Sheriff Jerry Green. It appears that Sheriff Jerry Green struck a deal that saved more than 100 employee jobs. Now, according to a local Vindicator article, Joe Biden ordered the U.S. Marshals Service to end contracts with private prisons, housing up to 800 federal inmates. Now, now, the deal with that uh, sheriff, that sheriff Jerry Green reached is uh, with the U.S. Marshal Services and the prison system that will allow a 2.2 percent administrative fee that will add revenue of of up to well, up to 550,000 to about 700,000 per year to the sheriff's office, which saved a pretty decent amount of employee jobs. Story number four. Moving up. A lot of local school districts are depending on levies to stay in the black outside of COVID-19 money. COVID-19 exposed the financial outlook for a lot of districts and the end game looks very insecure because everyone is holding on to their pocketbooks. It means there's not a lot of disposable money to spend. The money game is real, and when the virus hit, every district went to the, the drawing board to trim costs while dropping to their knees, hoping and praying for local school levies to pass. This story is important because everyone is trying to stay in the black, inc including voters. Now, if you don't see the end game in the story, red ink, I'll give it to you, red ink means job cuts, program cuts, and worst of all, downsizing. Some districts have already started downsizing, and with local residents seeing the value of their own money, many may choose not to vote for school levies. Story number five, another House bill in the headlines. A new bill that once again puts the center of attention on a battle between Democrats and Republicans now has Youngstown's finance director concerned. The bill would take 
away tax money from cities that allowed people to work from home since they were not technically inside of the city in which they work. So they will be taking that money, that tax money, and putting it back in those people's pockets. Now, although the bill seems fair and was widely supported by Republicans, it apparently has stirred up some conversations because it could cost Youngstown up to $6.6 million a year if passed, according to uh, the city's finance director. $3.3 million was also in that uh, that mix, but it, at the end, it adds up to $6.6 million. Now, the bill now heads to Ohio Senate, and uh, we'll see how the story develops over Story number six, assessing Tito Brown as mayor of Youngstown. Now, a mayor who everyone knows and seems to always show up is Tito Brown. Now, he's always there, but at the moment headed into election season, it may be time to assess the mayor's accomplishments and failures. At the moment, Youngstown's budget is balanced. That's a plus for Tito, but it's balanced because of COVID-19, and no one will ever know what would have happened outside of the virus. Crime is also up, and after recent shootings that sparked a nation that sparked nationwide attention. Many are skeptical about Tito Brown's relationships with uh, the YPD. So this is also a uh, uh, something that's brewing. Now, after making this is this is after it made front page news. The fire department has also been busy. The board of education has also been on defense. They've been on defense too. So this is all happening in Youngstown because they've had to kind of watch what they tell each other, watch what they tell the media. And what makes matters even worse, city council is also in question after councilman member Julius Oliver ran against the mayor while going on the record admitting his displeasures with Mayor Tito Brown's leadership. Now the city is also on a job creation search and a hopeful push for an education redemption story while on yet another school CEO. Now, in the end, everyone may know Tito, but the ball will be in his hands on how he plans to revive a city with a rich history but a declining population and which is probably declining in morale. In the heat of all of this stuff, this is a critical election for Youngstown. Outside of the Democrat and Republican debates, the city of Youngstown is fighting for jobs, progress, and a return on their investment. Story number seven in the top two local headlines and developing news stories that made in this week. Stories for you. Stories for love. Stories for excitement. Are city bars a problem? Drink up. Last call. Restaurants and bars have always been the gateway to, to the future of city life, country life, and much more. Restaurants and bars. Now, these venues are where people gather and let loose. But recent murders at local bars have put crime in the city and the city back in the spotlight. Uh, now, the sad part about the story is, this, is that such violence has taken place in multiple locations that's multiple bars people see somebody that they that they have, have some strife some beef with and they go after them and they cause a real lot of problems shots fire people scattering falling on the ground drinks everywhere it's pretty sad now if this story stays alive it could be a star killer because musicians dancers comedians and even actors all get their first shot at fame and run down beat up bars and even churches while all having been taking and they've well all of these venues have been taking a hit because of COVID-19 but uh with this uh, recent spike in crime people dying it's, it's even worse city council has some tough decisions to make this is the truth because uh as the old saying goes, one bad apple spoils the whole tree. And every time somebody gets killed at one of these locations, it puts them on this on the radar and nobody wants to go back. And that's why this story is still developing. That's why I made it in this week. Are city bars the problem? Story number eight at the top local headline and developing news story that made it in this week. It may be time to pay attention to the news. That could possibly keep you informed, keep you saved, keep you comfort, and keep you knowing how to make better decisions. Now, 
is the time. Won't you join the mediator in this top local story? Misuse of public funds resolved due to federal aid money. This is the top story this week. Federal aid money into Youngstown has pretty much saved the city's finances for now, but the city has to somehow gear its focus on future growth with a dwindling and decaying population at the moment when when outside communities see public funds that they can't use, they feel cheated because their communities seem to be meeting the grades. And at the moment, Youngstown has to live up to its promises and start uh, developing some results. What that means is outside communities could be jealous because Youngstown is receiving more money than them because of their circumstances and they're doing the right thing. Now, in this ongoing financial saga, the talk now is on return on getting a return on the public investment while also meeting expectations this seems to be youngstown's achilles heel but as of now it could it is good to see that the city is meeting its financial obligations so that's good news but we still have to the youngstown has to pick up the pace and start developing some results and that's why stirred a break made to the top this week but those are our top eight local headlines and developing news stories that I made this week i'll be right back with the top eight international headlines and developing news stories so don't go anywhere you're the media me bro West, I'll be right back. Tune in and don't forget to subscribe to Method 8 Inc. YouTube channel. You can also watch free public entertainment. And don't forget to show some support by visiting www.method8inc.com by buying something, clicking something, watching something, or just reading something. You can also sponsor a program as well. That's www.method8inc.com. You've taken these people and put them in a fake reality. What are you doing? You must guard the citizens with your life. I have a feeling that Mother Time has started a war. The Lord of Escobar interfered. Every elite is going straight to hell. I think you're crazy. You've always been a little crazy. Wait till after the second moon. The imagination is my biggest weapon. <laughs> Do you know how much time you've spent with me so far? Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top eight international headlines and developing news stories that made in this week. So join hands, bond with me. Let's break bread together and tell stories and listen to stories. Just think. Your story could be next. You don't know. Your story could be a story of love, bonding, and excitement, unity, achievement. It could be purpose-driven. And that's what mediation is all about. That is my story. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> and I'm sticking to it, baby. Ooh. Let's get to it. Ah, story number one. What's going on with Black Lives Matter? The group that caused an outpour of radical support towards black issues in America is now being shaken up due to money concerns. People want to know about the money, the investments. They've been making a lot of money. Activists within the group are starting to speak out and one of the head members has stepped down. Now, the, uh, the so-called somehow... Uh, developed into an umbrella organization has also faced criticism for not meeting the demands of a particular group of nonprofits, and a lot of black activists are not happy uh, with how black issues are being handled by the group so there's a lot happening in story number one when it comes to this uh the sensitive top story number two political issues are seeping into the sports arena but how did this happen? Sports is all about watching the game and a lot of people watch sports as a hobby. But the strategy to use star athletes as a centerpiece for social and political movements seem to still be alive and well even today. 
for today, folks. Now, the attack now seems to be on the media, but is there something more in the story, especially when you talk about the fans, the excitement, the buildup, the stories that all relate to that one simple game? Now, here is a path to follow. These are some of the stories that, that kind of uh, brought this story to what it is now. Former President Donald Trump bashed the media for being a politician and the way the media was treating him. So you started seeing a ripple effect of other cases involving people's views of the media starting to take place. Athletes for years have been bashing the media and blaming the media for their mental health and uh, the concerns that have been going on in their own personal lives being revealed to the public because of the media. Now, one analogy in this story is what if you take it back when the basic business model was to use radios, televisions, and other outlets to promote and expand the business of politics and sports? So what I'm saying is what if you take it back to when this idea of using the media to expand these uh, athletes' lives and their importance in everyday people's lives. What if you take that business idea and put it in today's uh, the, the athletes' today's mind? Maybe they don't understand how important the media actually is, or maybe they just don't want the media into their lives. So this is a this is a seesaw battle here because it has some pros and cons. Now the truth is that a lot of people would be broke without the media, including myself, well myself, soldiers, people on the battlefield because their stories would never be told. The media has expanded the horizons of almost every business aspect because it's a model that works. It works. The media has also made a lot of stars what they are today. You can even talk Talk to people in prisons. People in prisons want their stories to be in the media because they get aid and they get help. Because and that's how they they somehow can get off. Now in this story, we see a strategy that could either work in favor of the athlete or backfire and cost a lot of people some much needed attention and money. What if the, the media just says, you know what, I'm not showing up? Now the simple fact is that no matter how crazy the limelight may seem, the media is needed to promote any business or athlete any model any aspect you need cameras you need writers you need journalists now this is a basic old business model that still works to this day and that's why story number two made it in this week story number three looking back at the tariff wars put in place by donald trump now this time to go back now with inflation on the rise it may now be time to go back and revisit the ripple effect of the tariff wars put in place by Trump. It's time to look and see if they are bringing in the revenue that is needed, especially in this downtime, or if they are still needed, or if they are straining other countries. Now, some articles blame the Trump tariffs on the rise in the price of steel and lumber prices. The rise in costs is causing housing prices to spike because you need steel, lumber, and all this other stuff to build houses. Now, the main talking point in the article by CNN Business that, that that was uh, brought to light is getting the reader to understand how lifting Trump's tariffs could stabilize prices. This is a this is a analyst believing this. Now the article succeeds. This is where the article succeeds at, and it succeeds at getting the reader to understand how the spike in steel and lumber prices started. It also provides some powerful information on how the problem could be solved. Story number four. Time to assess the ripple effect of grassroots movements, which are seem to be a very very Amazing strategic move that people use in America, creating a movement. It's been going on for a long time. St strategies, riots, uh, getting in, finding ways to infiltrate. Now, in politics, one thing is for sure, and that is the fact that candidates can often use movements to get elected. People use movements all the time to bring about issues and uh, and and topics that need to be addressed now there are numerous amounts of movements always taking place in america that can often put domestic policies in the spotlight 
And uh, at the moment, the push for radical for, um, for racial justice, gun control and a shift uh, for justice reform period has sparked uh, numerous grassroots movements that have caused such a bitter, bitter uh, problem, a bitter, if you want to call it a bitter effect, people backlashing, choking people, all types of craziness, and it even caused a crime wave that only time will tell how all this turns out. Once the dust settles, we, 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 we at the end of the day, we're still here. We got to, we got to somehow get this stuff figured out. Now, this story is hanging on because everybody's trying to start a movement, and uh, that's why story number four made it in this week. Well, those are our top Four international headlines and developing news stories that I made this week. I'll be right back with the top, top four. So don't go anywhere. You're the media. Me, Brian West. I'll be right back. If you want to check out the stories that almost made it in or did make it in, go to our Twitter feed on our website. Check out everything. All of the sources are there. If you go to the website. It's M-E-T-H-O-D, the number eight, I-N-C.com. Method 88.com where you can buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor program. Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top, top four international headlines and developing news stories that made in this week, folks. As you can see, format is simple. The game plan is simple. Address the stories that need to be addressed. Review, acknowledge, Get concerned, talk, analyze, and at the end of the day, come up with a peaceful solution to solve the problem. That's what this show is all about. Simple, simple, simple is the word. Keep it simple, sweet, nothing fancy, just my smiling face giving you the news. That's what I'm here to do, and that's my story, folks. And I'm sticking to it. Let's get to it. Story number five, the outlook on COVID-19 then versus now. It may be safe to say that the outlook on COVID-19 has changed. And a lot of people seem to be less concerned about the still lingering virus. Analysts are seeing the positive effect of the COVID-19 vaccine. And they're seeing what it's having on the spread. It's preventing the spread. But many still remain skeptical. Uh, with the new information coming out on a daily basis new new ideas new stuff happening the question now seems to be was the virus worth the hailstorm of overreactions that took place to stop the spread now with new information coming out daily and investigations taking place people are very concerned about the roots that cause so much chaos uh, and uh in this developing story uh, now seems to be uh, focused on who to blame versus preventing the spread. So the story has evolved over time uh, and, the, and the virus is still lingering while it's de still developing. Now at the moment, the government has been overstepping the boundaries of freedom just to get people vaccinated and it is causing a lot of trust issues. Vaccine lotteries and other vaccine mandates are really causing people to wonder what's really behind the push to get people vaccinated. Are we really trying to save lives or is there some big conspiracy going on? This is all bottled up inside of story number five. Now, uh, one Brazilian town has seen a 95% drop in COVID-19 deaths after being vaccinated. They're even running experiments, all types of things to to uh to to get all this stuff earned out this was in a bbc report now another report shows how COVID 19 has increased medical bills and put a lot of people in debt one last story highlights a push to get the biden administration to declassify intelligence on the origins of COVID 19. story number six what is really causing the sudden spike in american crime now almost every day of this year america Americans have seen a wave of stories relating to crime waves. Real sad. These stories are causing people to be very concerned about the roots and causes of sudden spikes in crime. Why, why are people getting all revved up? Can't we just love each other and, and be thankful for what we get? If I got bread, I can share with you. You don't have to take my bread. You know what I'm saying? Love. Story number seven in the top two international headlines and developing news stories that I made it this week. Whew, mediation is tough. And you've got to battle through the storm. Stay in the middle, fighting, being spit on, laughed at. But you've got to go. You've got to go. Even when you're booed off stage, you've got to go. 
You've got to get the job done. They may not like you because you're coming to make peace and people want to fight, but you've got to go on. Story number seven, top two international headlines and developing news stories that made this week. Gun sales in the news under a Democrat majority. Gun stories are staying alive. Multiple headlines relating to gun sales could show that people could be feeding into the belief that Democrats are out to take away America's guns. They're believing that maybe they are. It's been a lot of strange things happening in the Democratic Party. Very, very interesting. Now, with story after story about irresponsible gun ownership circulating on almost a daily basis, this story remains hot. Now, with gun control legislation remaining a top Democrat priority, Americans are buying now with the fear that Democrats are out to take their weapons. And that's why story number seven made into the top two this week story number eight and the top international headline and developing news story that made in this week oh it's raining stories a lot to talk about a lot to be excited about a lot to cry about a lot to laugh about and a lot to love a lot to believe in baby Ooh. Ooh, chisels when i think about the excitement of telling a story that's going to spark up a conversation the rich poor and middle class debate who will win it when you talk about the money show me the money i needed to pay the bills i got to feed mama the children the little cousins the fight for the mighty dollar is still on folks and people from each tax bracket want a piece of the pie with president biden homing in on the high earners the strategy now seems to be on making moves to get through the next four years now what could end up being the deciding factor in biden's re-election will most likely be the numbers game centered around data showing if the rich is getting richer if the poor is getting poor and the middle class if they're still stuck in the middle now what this means is there's a data grab the stats we've got to see who's surviving who's spending the dollars who's hoarding the dollars who's cheating who's doing what they're supposed to do with the money there's oversight there's bureaucracy. There's something happening in story number eight. Now, policy will determine who will win the battle to put money in the pockets of struggling Americans. And that's why story number eight made it to the top this week, folks. Well, those are our top eight international headlines and developing news stories that I made it this week. I hope you got something out of today's program, folks. Whew, it's been a long, long week, and I've been struggling through, and that's why I'm coming in here every week to give you the top eight stories. I hope you got something out of today's program. I always get something out of doing the research. As usual, every week, I like to thank the news outlets, the media, the people on the front lines, the journalists. You deserve all the credit. I'm just the media, the man in the middle. If you want to show us some support or me any support, all you have to do is visit the website on the screen, buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor the program. All Any support goes right back into this lovely show and the community to keep things active. And, uh, if you, like I, and if you want to show us more support, it doesn't take much. So so just keep me on your mind. Think about me every week coming in here looking through over 200 or more stories just for you to keep you informed and to keep you on top of your game. And that's, that's what I've been trying to do. So I'll be back next week to look through over 200 or more stories just for you. So thank you so much for tuning into the media this week with me, Brian West. Have a good week, everybody. Peace. <laughs> Have no fear, fellow citizens.